There you go. And where do you want to? So how do you? Does it start a comment? Then? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. <coughs> Have I got a permission to get into it? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's available on your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to go to status okay, right here, and it should be. Yeah, I don't it's think not. it's available on your phone. I think okay. it's a pretty limited uh, thing going on. All right, so we're streaming here from uh, White Cube. Ten seconds. Okay. What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the hottest radio show that Abu Dhabi has to offer. This is Have You Heard, episode number 10. You're listening to us live on YQ Radio. If you haven't had the chance to upload the um, the app, please do so. It's available on Android and your iPhone. And please follow us on all social media platforms, facebook.com slash Have You Heard Radio, on Twitter at Have You Heard Radio, on Instagram at Have You Heard Radio, and on Snapchat at Have You Heard Radio. And yes, we are live on live.me and Facebook Live. So if you have any comments, uh, any suggestions, uh, please uh, feel free to send us a comment or any emojis and all that. So um, we have uh, a fun, well, sort of, in, in a way, it's, it's kind of a somber, but yet it's going to end up being a fun-packed show this week. And uh, I want to introduce to you to my co-host. Uh, she hails from San Francisco, California, the Whoa. Golden Gate Queen herself, <laughs> Miss Z in the building. <laughs> In the building. And uh, the Empress of Britain, hailing from uh, London, England, Miss Tommy is Yay. in the building. Hi, guys. All right. And um, I brought my, uh, he's been on the show plenty of times. Um, he's probably one of the best spoken word uh, artists in town. I consider him to be a renaissance man. <laughs> and um, I want him to come into the show to just talk about um, the... Um, the aftermath of the tragedy that happened in Orlando. Um, Mr. Mohammed Anis is in the building. Woo! We're showing, we're showing <laughs> photos. It's, it's, it's live exception. Anyway. Yeah, anyways. Live exception. I like we'll, that. We'll do, we'll do the editing, uh, in other words. But um, we have a fun pack show. Of, well, we're going to try to have a fun pack show. Of course, we're going to do everything as usual. We have Have You Heard News? We have What's Hot in Abu Dhabi with Miss Tommy. And we have our very special guest coming in. Uh, they're probably one of the best bands in town, and they're gonna we're gonna have an interview with them, hear what they have to say about the situation, and we're gonna have a live performance. As per Casper is in the building. Yay! Yay! Woo! And um, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and uh, um, we're gonna have what you call me with Miss Tommy uh, with Ms. Z. Do you have that? Uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do it. Oh, we'll do it. You know, we'll play by ear. And, of course, my top ten lists of the week. So hopefully we, you know, uplift and motivate and get back to the fun and all that. But we have to take care of this first. And, of course, um, uh, my my heartfelt condolences goes out to all the families of the victims that died in the tragic massacre that happened at Pulse uh, nightclub in Orlando 
on Sunday. And it's been it's been such a traumatic week for the city. Um, it hits close to home for me because um, Orlando, even though I'm from Queens in New York, Orlando is like a, a second hometown. It's the place where I got my college degree from the University of Central Florida. It was the city where my wife and I got married. It was the city where my sons were born. They were born at Winnie Palmer Hospital, which is a few yards away from the Orlando Regional Medical Center where they were taking care of the victims. Wow. And um, I have I, I, the, the moment that I heard the news, I called uh, some friends of mine who, were, uh, who are gay, and they're doing fine. But when it came to their friends, some of them were in the, in the nightclub. And it's, I, I'm, I'm just beyond disbelief, you know, because I was, I used to, I used to be naive about like, this would never happen in Orlando. This would, never, even when there was a tragedy, like for example, uh, Sandy Hook a few years ago and, and Charleston and, and South Carolina in the church and, and in Paris, I would say to myself, this would never happen in Orlando. And it did. And I think part of the, part of the innocence of the city has disappeared, you know, and, I want to I want to make this clear that everyone has has been affected by this. The LGBT community has been affected by this. The Hispanic community has been affected by this because most of the victims were Hispanic males. The Muslim community has been affected because once again, you know, people are using this as saying that it was um, it was an ISIS related situation, but unfortunately, this is more of a hate crime. <laughs> And I do not want for a second to glamorize this perpetrator that 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 did this. And um, I had a conversation with um, some of uh, some people about the the situation. And, and once again, uh, everyone just goes on social media and finds the bad timing mm -hmm. to express their political, historical, and religious beliefs. And I just said, you know, why don't we just not talk about this for this week? Let's mourn, ask questions later. Mm. You know. Because now is not the time, you know, and, and I could care less about the accuracy of the facts, but the reality is that this hit close to home. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost towards the end of the phase, the grief, the grieving phase, where, you know, you start being uh, sad and then upset and then learning to accept this mm -hmm. and what the community can do to avoid this from happening, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, I, I when this happened on Sunday, I, I, I almost thought about not doing the show this week. But I thought as uh, we have a re responsibility as not only musicians, but as hosts to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I and I I do want to uh, glorify um, the stories of the mothers of some of the victims because they have a story to tell, too, you know. But uh, I want to I want to talk to you guys. Uh, what, what's what's your take on about that? What, uh, see, I'm going to start with you. Oh, man. This is a huge bag of, um, you know, uh, so there's a lot of different things at play. Um, I think the biggest thing is that um, 50 people mm. were needlessly killed. Mm. Um, and I think that there's a lot of different aspects to it. Um, and being an American outside of America mm. is very interesting as well because you get a different perspective from people around the world. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear you guys' you know, thoughts on it as well. But, you know, it just seems like I read a tweet um, after Sandy Hook when someone said, you know, once we um, once we decided not to do anything about gun control or policy in general mm. um, after Sandy Hook is when we said we were okay with our children dying, mm. right? Or something to that effect. Um, I'll find the actual tweet. Um, and basically, uh, you know, this is, happens way too often. Mm. It wasn't even the, the only shooting that day. Mm. There were seven other shootings that day. So yeah. that, to me, just makes me feel like, what is going on? Mm. And why is this still happening mm. continuously? Like, it just doesn't stop. Mm. Nothing's changing. Um, and then there's a whole aspect of what's the narrative of this story? So what's mm. going on? Because, you know, immediately upon hearing um, reports about the shooter, everyone was like, oh, he's Muslim, he's, he's mm. related to ISIS, uh, you know, he's claiming ISIS and all this stuff. And in, in reality, yeah. that's not the real narrative. The real narrative was that it was a hate crime, that he wasn't even religious, that mm. he clearly had some issues mentally. He was a U.S. citizen from he New York. He was a U.S. citizen. Mm. He's yeah. a natural-born citizen as well. Mm. Not, um, you know, not an immigrant. And 
and I think I don't think ISIS I think ISIS claimed it mm-hmm. after they were you know given that credit for it but I don't think it had anything to do with it to be mm-hmm. honest um, and then he was gay so you know it, it, those are the reports that are coming out so he he clearly had some internal issues that he was dealing with and, and wasn't able to do that um, in a way without killing people so mm. I don't know I don't know where to start there's just a whole lot of grief there's just a whole lot of anger um, and then and then you roll in you know people's religious like race side religious mm. um, their whole perspectives religiously their political beliefs their own personal beliefs around mm. guns and mm. whether they you know they want guns or they don't want guns um, and the reality of the fact is this is the f- only first world country in the world mm. that this happens on a regular basis. Mm. So I just don't, I don't know what to do. Mm. I just don't know as individuals, as Americans, what we can do. Um, and that's the frustrating part. Because mm. most everything else, there's like, okay, there's something you can do. There's, mm. You know, something um, you can do to say it's not okay that we're, that we're, that we're dying. Mm. And... You know, it's never, for me, I've never been in a situation where it hit close to home like that. Um, but, I, you know, I can feel Ray's grief. You know, he's been really upset about it um, throughout this week. And mm. feeling like, yeah, it could literally happen anywhere. Mm. Anywhere. And so, mm. what do we Just, do? Where do we go from here? Tommy, what, what's your thoughts about yeah. um, the situation? You know, as a Brit, we don't have, you know, a lot of the gun crimes that, you guys have, but it really, really breaks my heart. And, you know, when I was looking at the photos of the people that died, they're, they, they're young, 24-year-olds, 23-year-olds, and it's like, this is life wasted. I mean, these guys have their lives ahead of them. And, you know, like you were saying, they're people first, you know, so all of this religious beliefs and all this political beliefs, it's like, like you said, put that aside. Okay, and let's think about the fact that these young people have lost their lives and they shouldn't have. And that's the basics of it, you know. And I don't know, as Americans, like, I mean, as Brits, when we hear, especially when when I'm back home, we hear Mm -hmm. stuff like this. We're like, you know, what is what's going to happen with this whole gun situation? What's going to happen? Because in America, we don't get it. Like, you know, in America, people are, are allowed to buy these guns and they're licensed. I mean, his gun was licensed. He he. Oh, he got it legally. Totally he got it legally. legally. Yeah. Got it I don't. Legally. I don't get that. Yeah. I don't get that. I don't get that. To be honest. I, mean, I just I just want to put that in perspective. Obama actually had this question, and he he really simplified the madness when he was uh, when he brought up this case of where the FBI knows that there is an ISIS sympathizer. Okay, he is licensed to the gun. Yet the maximum the president can do is put him on a no-fly list. So you can't wow. fly, but you can buy a gun. Yeah, you can buy a gun, you know. And now it, there are there are some there are some problems. Uh, there, there, there. I mean, uh, they say that they say that uh, it would violate constitutional rights. Uh, that that's one thing. And but it, it's just so bad to the point that they are not um, that, that uh, the president says no one is permitted to study gun violence. Mm. That's how bad it is to study it. Well, here's so, a, here's here's mm. the thing. I mean, um, as far as I'm concerned, I guns will always be around. There's no getting around it. It's, it's mm. protected by the yeah, Constitution, by the Constitution. Right of bear arms. Even the responsible gun owners. I have my two brother-in-laws. Mm. They're gun owners. Mm. They could tell you that, and they can agree that um, the salt, the selling of assault deadly rifles is uncalled for. There shouldn't, they shouldn't be mm-hmm. those types of, of weapons in the community. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with AK-15? I could understand. I could give an exception to maybe the police department mm-hmm. or military. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next thing you know, we'll have someone just using a machine gun and, and wiping everybody out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so the question. And I hate to get into the gun control thing because it's a very it's a it's a it's a, it's a very controversial issue. Mm. Um, when you when I think of uh, I I looked at all these stories, it breaks my heart. Mm. Um, and I said to I made a comment or a, a, a post saying um, just to put aside your political, mm. historical, and religious mm. beliefs for some other time, mm. and put yourselves in the shoes. Mm of the parents who lost a child. The victims was someone's 
mom, mm-hmm. someone's son, daughter, mm-hmm. niece, nephew, cousin. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, Mina Justice, she lost her son. They had a conversation over the text, over text. Uh, she was having a text message with her 3 year old son. Her 3 year old son was trapped inside the bathroom. Mm-hmm. The first message says, Mommy, I love you. This was at 2.06 a.m. In the club, they shooting. So Mia just has tried to call her 30-year-old son. No answer. Alarm and half awake, she trapped out a response. You okay? At 2.07 a.m., he wrote, trapped in bathroom. Just as asked what club, and he responded, Pulse, downtown, call police. Then at 2.08, I'm going to die. Hmm. Now wide awake, just as dialed 911. She sent a flurry of texts over the next several minutes. I'm calling them now. You still in there? Answer our damn phone. Call them. Call me. The 911 dispatcher wanted her to stay on the line. She wondered what kind of danger her son was in. He was normally a, ho- a homebody who liked to eat and work out. He liked to make everyone laugh. He worked as an accountant and lived in a condo in downtown Orlando. She would say, lives in a sky house like the Jeffersons. He lives rich. At 2.39, he responded, call them mommy now. He wrote that he was in the bathroom. He's coming. I'm going to die. Uh, Justice asked her son if anyone was hurt and which bathroom he was in. Lots. Yes, he responded at 2.42. When he didn't text back, she sent several more messages. Was he with police? She wrote, text me, please. He wrote, four minutes later, no. Still here in the bathroom. He has us. They need to come get us. At 2.49 a.m., she told the pol- she told him the police were there and to let her know when he saw them. He's, he wrote, hurry, he's in the bathroom with us. She asked, is the man in the bathroom with you? At 2.50, uh, he wrote, he's a terror. Then a final text from her son a minute later, yes. Aww. And more than 15 hours after that text, Justice still didn't hear from her son. Um, she and a dozen family and friends were at the hotel, standing um, in the area for relatives awaiting news. And on Monday, her fears were realized as another name added to the list. Um, then there was the mother. We all saw this on national news. The mother that drove two hours away to, to the club to see if her son was okay. And she wasn't getting any answers. Uh, the mother of Christopher Lean Allen and, um, her only child, wow. her, him and her, and his boyfriend were at the club and she didn't get anything, any, any news about if he was okay, missing. And uh, on Monday, uh, she was still waiting for the word and holding out a silver of hope. And then it came the horrible crushing news that her 30, 32-year-old son was dead, one of the 49 victims. And then, um, this kills me, um, Brenda McCool, she was the oldest of the victims, 49 years old, mother of 11. Wow. And a survival, wow. double survivor of cancer two times wow. she died protecting her son who had gone to the club with 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 her and as the shooting was happening she told her son to get down basically she took a bullet for her son she's dead he's alive hmm. um, shows you like how much of a sacrifice uh she did for uh, and and she was going to be a real estate agent and the youngest, um, Akira Murray, she was just 18, visiting her brother after finishing high school in Philadelphia. She had just graduated from West Catholic Preparatory High School and had signed a letter of intent to play basketball at Mercyhurst University, according to a statement from the high school. And this one hits, um, actually, Corey Connell. He was not a club person. And they were actually leaving. Him and his girlfriend were leaving Pulse when this happened. His his girlfriend survived, but he didn't. He was going to be a firefighter, a student at Valencia. The reason why he went to the club, because his girlfriend wanted to teach him how to dance salsa music. Oh, God. And this hits close to home because this is a musician that I had the fortunate of, of seeing perform live. And to me, this is like a heavy blow to the entire uh, Orlando local music scene. 
And this one uh, devastated me because I was watching it live. The, the news reporter was talking to the mother. Mm-hmm. Moments later, she went in to see if he was okay. And right in front of live, she we found out that her son died. And uh, his name was Shane Tomlinson. He was a 33-year-old singer. He performed with uh, Frequency, which arguably they're one of the best top 40 cover bands in all of Orlando. Mm. And he just finished a gig at Orlando's Blue Martini and decided to show up to the club at 1 a.m. Um, he was, a, uh, according to Lathan Turner, Associate Director of Student Trans- Translations at the university, he was a great person. Um, jolly, funny, outgoing. When it comes to music, he, he commanded the stage. And um, they found out that he died. And then uh, Antonio Brown, he just finished serving the military. He was a U.S. Army captain in the reserves. He just did a stint in Kuwait and came back. Imagine that, coming back from that type of situation where you're putting your life on the line, you come home and your life is taken away this way. Um, I don't know. It, uh, it, the more I, th- you know, it, it, it's, it gets me going. It, it upsets me. It really does. I'm, I don't know. Y'all can go ahead. Where I can get my emotions. Mm. Whatever you have to say, go ahead. Uh, All right. Um, I wrote a little something. Uh, Tommy, can I ask you to, or Z, whichever you uh, All right. So, Mama's got a, we're going to let Ray mm. compose himself. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. So, Mama, the, we, Ray asked him to come in because he had a little something that he, that, you know, was inspired to write um, regarding the tragedy. It's, so. um, it's a little piece. Um, it's not really a, a poem as opposed to a speech. Um, this whole thing's terrible. It's like a little knife stuck somewhere deeper in the hearts of hearts, and we're friendly fingering out how to pull it out. Ladies and gentlemen, a few minutes ago you heard words from someone who's lived in Orlando. I'd like to express my own as an outsider. I'd like you to understand that what I'm about to say is due to a chemistry of different feelings, not just as a fellow human being, but who I am and how this has affected me personally. Two days ago when I started writing the speech, like every responsible writer, I thought of what people might expect of me, given my background, my name, my religious upbringing. The the most prominent thought was how I was going to renounce this man and his henuous actions of anything that is from his supposed religion. Well, this evening I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be quoting religious passages or using empirical evidence to suggest that this extends beyond a system of beliefs that was there for 1,400 years. I'm also not going to be talking about the ethnic division a given opportunistic few are going to have a field day with since they now have fresh material to impose their discriminant rhetoric, not that they are any less discriminant than Omar Batin was during that night. This evening, I choose not to feel pushed into an apologetic stance about who I am. It's something that the LGBT community demonstrates to remind us we do not have to feel apologetic about who we are as people. We can learn from that. We can all learn from that, and I would like to honor that. You see, the reason why I mention all this is that to me, 9-11 was just yesterday. It was a turning point in our history that divided, us, that divided us all and encouraged our prejudice. I know I'm still wary of them just about 15 years after when I go to visit my dad in South Carolina, whom, unlike me, is now a naturalized citizen. I have to apply for a visit visa. I get all sorts of advice from friends and family every time I go towards the airport. Get rid of the beard. Don't pray in the airport. My own brother was held for questioning for four hours, though he tells me they were generally nice to him. 
This incident is now being compared to 9-11, and rightfully so. Like Ray here, it's hard to figure out what you really want to say before the opportunity to speak comes. I don't know either until I spoke with my mother. My mother wanted to know everything. The, reporter, the reporters on CNN spoke too fast for her. So I gave her the detailed spiel, including all the mortifying text messages I read off the internet between the victim and the parents that night. She responded with, Ya uledi. Roughly, that translates to my children. Those were the words that set the tone of the conversation, the tone I'd like to speak with now. Now, I will choose to believe unapologetically that I'm in a world of brothers, sisters, parents, and cousins. A world that disagrees, but does so with acceptance. Mm -hmm. I will not renounce this man of his religion or his God he claimed to believe, if he had any, but himself. Only a person with a godhood complex would truly see himself right in choosing to end lives that who knows mm -hmm. what could have been. Mm -hmm. I will, however, renounce him of his humanity, and the humanity of those he sympathizes with. I will believe, unapologetically, that there are people who can see beyond the dividing rhetoric that I can pray with Ray Mello here and everyone else in the world for the people who lost their nieces, mm -hmm. their nephews, sons, daughters, and sisters. Religions or the lack thereof cannot dictate or measure the sincerity of your prayers so long as they come from the hearts of hearts. I would like to also take this opportunity to extend the sentiment to the victims of 133 mass shootings that have happened in America in 2016 alone, yet have largely went unnoticed. Fifteen of these mass shootings took place in the state of Florida. It is amazing how the media can selectively steer our empathy as a collective. Mm -hmm. This is not to deny or undermine our current tragedy, but we are, when we are done mourning this incident, I think we ought to start asking questions about other incidents which have seemingly garnered not much attention. Mm -hmm. To the people of Orlando, I'm an Egyptian. I've witnessed two governments being overthrown in my lifetime and then thousands of lives being taken away on my country's soil in the chaos that ensued. Yet it's still a place we can call home thanks to the abundance of people who continue to make it beautiful despite its circumstances, even if we do not see them glorified on mainstream media. I encourage you to do the same. It is my humble opinion that the definition of a free spirit as one who is capable of making the best out of the worst of circumstances. As a closing statement, I'd like to plagiarize a couple of words from Jemmy Fillon from a video I think should go viral. Keep loving each other. Keep respecting each other. Keep on dancing. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a... Yep. Yes, go ahead. Just <laughs> doing the same thing. Go we're we're going to take a break. We're going to get ourselves going. Uh, when we come back, we have Have Here News and What's Hot in Abu Dhabi. You're listening to, and I appreciate those uh, heartfelt. Yes. Yeah, and again, uh, my heartfelt condolences goes to my people in Orlando. You're listening to Have You Heard on YQ Radio. How many so far did you say? What was that? What was the numbers? That's just for the year. 133 mass shootings. Wow. This year. This, this year. year. 15 of them were for under in Florida. A thousand hearts. Maybe we should do some um, Orlando slang. Yeah. Okay, right? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. All right. So, what was the issue? You kept, you kept. Uh, yeah, because you're far away from the mic. You're too far. Yeah. Up, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. when when I came in, when I came. Yeah, in yeah, close, that was fine. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> that was cool. Just when you talk, you gotta move in. Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> we have over a thousand hearts. Wow. Give me that one. I'll, I'll manage that. Well, 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 well. Oh. I'll this one. Yeah. Cool. You you want them to come in now or the next one? Um. Sure. Uh, yeah, whatever works. Everything's up for grabs today. Yeah. Uh, let, him, let him in. 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 Let him
Get over here. So, so Ray, you want to do some Orlando slang? Orlando, I don't know what some Orlando slang. I don't know what Orlando slang. Right. We can go with the what's some local expat slang here. Like, what are words that, that you use here that you just wouldn't use elsewhere? <laughs> a panda. <laughs> How much do we get paid for doing that? I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> what are you asking us that question for? <laughs> what? How much do you get paid for doing that? <laughs> Let me ask the bo nice we're going to ask the boss man excellent. about that. So. There's three whole people uh, yeah, watching us. I appreciate, us. I appreciate the love. <laughs> keep our, you know, we gotta keep united, okay? Yeah. yeah. I love the hearts. Keep them coming. Any comments? So. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're fine. Um, can you just move you on, like, one back? Sure. Right. <laughs> you can flip it. Oh, one, two, three. Can I get Let's two, three, so we can get everybody in it. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's still the first side, though. Can you move Hi, guys. And look, I'm representing. You know looks backwards. Orlando City. Oh, yeah. It is beautiful. Last night they had a vigil at my alma mater, UCF. Twelve, twelve thousand people showed up at the, at the uh, college. Uh, when you behind the scenes. Hmm? The next break. The uh, the next so you break. Can give introduction. Yeah, the next break. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. Um, just a outpouring of people out. It didn't matter what, you know. We had they had uh, Christian people out there. Uh, Muslims, the gay community, everybody was out there to pay their respects, you know, and there's a beautiful picture of that, um, I'm probably going to post it, but, um, yeah. yeah, never say never, because uh, you never know what, you know, and I, and it sucks because now Orlando is, is on this, is on the list of cities that have been terrorized, you know, with Sandy Hook, Connecticut, now was it Royal Island, Connecticut, 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 I think, Sandy, Sandy Hook, excuse me, Charleston, South Carolina, and Columbine, San Bernardino, San Bernardino, almost, the list could go on infinitely almost at this point, and I think, this is my personal opinion, guns will always be around, I'm glad that we live in a country, here that they don't tolerate that and especially in England yeah. well yeah everyone goes yeah at all even the police don't carry them the, yeah and the benefit is obvious it's clear well, but, so yeah. rape, you know? it's just it's just there's no there's no like contest there's no there's no argument about it I'll be honest I don't mind I don't mind the existence of guns in the market I really don't but what I do mind is the how uh, how easily accessible to you to be. I mean, why, let me, why don't you mind i mean what why what's the good like what's the okay side of it the because for me i mean based on the based on the history of america and the founding fathers the, it, it would it be it, it became a constitutional right so it's kind of very difficult to remove and uh, from in my perspective sometimes you will be <laughs> in the situations where you are the only line of defense that is my opinion okay yeah but slavery was also in the constitution i mean just because it's in the constitution doesn't mean it's defensible morally or a good thing ethically or what about, what about and they didn't have assault rifles when the constitution was written and like you can have as many mu single shot muskets or pistols as you want but yeah. when you're able to load a 30 right 30 round clip into something that you can fire this many times and this quickly, yeah. you have an entirely different issue. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm... I, guns will always be around. And and if you take that one, that's going to be it's really un un unconstitu yeah, unconstitutional. And the Constitution can change. The, yeah. It, it can change, yeah. yeah. But the problem, with, literally... the problem is that the government, the NRA... Yeah, they control it. They Absolutely. control it. Yeah. They control it. Now, I think there should be a sort of like a... Just like when you get your driver's license... There should be some sort of standards as to, 
you know what what certain things you need to do first in order to get that right. Like if you want to own a gun, if you if you want to own a gun, take a class. Okay. Um, insurance. Take a psychological test to see whether you're capable mentally of of being responsible with it. You know, yeah. Because the the, pawn, the 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 pawn shops are not going to do anything. They sell anything to anybody, and they don't ask questions. Valid reason to own it. I mean, you were saying if your first line of defense, have you been to South Carolina? You know what I mean? Like, of the have, have you, no, no, no. Yes. Have you been? Hold on. Have uh, in South Carolina, in areas where where uh, there there is where I've been. I'm not an American citizen, by the way. Just to let you know, I'm Neither, Egyptian. But sure. All right. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, the thing when I was when I was there in Bluffton, South Carolina. These were very remote. Uh, I'm my dad. He lives in very remote areas. Like rural areas, uh, areas with rural, animals? Rural, rural, Three minutes rural. Up. Just give me so the hat. Anything yeah. out of the boot, it's, it's considered a safe area, just like Orlando was considered a few weeks back. But anything could happen. So a gun is there where, it, where it's an unthinkable option. But if it happens to be an option that's there, that's better. It would get, okay. it would ban, it would ban, uh, I'll tell you this way, it would ban right. auto, uh, assaulted yeah. rifles. There's going to be. Another way, another way that uh, people that people will get a, their hands on that. Yeah, and, and you know, we're no, right it's now, just not true. And then you you minimize and you minimize that. Yeah, it's just not true. That's actually not that's false. That's a false thing. Exactly. That's the point. There are a lot of countries without them, and, uh, and and they had them, and then they had a mass shooting, and now they don't have them anymore, and now their mass shooting is going like to nothing. Yeah. In my opinion, the first step, the first step is to allowing people to study gun violence. Can we please allow that first? No, I mean, the NRA has such a huge chokehold is that they won't even allow this. And it's this fantasy. It's this fantasy <coughs> of the good guy with the gun that perpetrates all this nonsense anyway. Yeah. You know, everybody's like, oh, no, I would be able to stop him. I'm freaking Rambo. No, you're not. No, you're not. I, you're you're not trained for that. You are going to end up shooting civilians, just like we're finding out. The cops did in this situation. Yeah. A lot of the people that guy were from crossfire from the cops. Yeah, and they're yeah. trained. There was a yeah, there was a kid, there was a cop who uh, who was barging in, uh, <coughs> who barged in the home, and he when he was shooting the perpetrator, he accidentally shot the twelve year old yeah. behind him. Wow. Yeah, because it went through. Yeah, because yeah. it went through. Even with Friday's incident, which I, it's it's tragic because of, uh, it's just now with the footnote, music, with the, the voice thing. Stop talking, yeah. just give like five seconds you know, of silence. Uh, she was just signing you know, autographs like after a show, and someone and just comes up and, okay. and yeah. shoots her. Yeah. 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 Like if it comes up, okay. that's what I said. Like, you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. People don't yeah. hear you. Yeah. Shuffling. Did you yeah. hear that, Ray? What's up? Well, before we go to a music break, we need to um, have like five seconds of complete silence. Like no shuffling, yeah. no move okay. the don't move the headphones, don't move anything. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Just give me the cue and so everybody will be quiet. I've been working in the school and I'm like, stop like tapping the table a lot. Okay. That was the only time I've actually seen the game. Okay. All right, no problem. But that's the So. I frankly can do without. Yeah, but I think we all. Can. Yeah, but I can. But, but you know, I also need to learn to appreciate other cultures as well. All right, so you guys want to go in? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right, so I'm gonna slowly fade out the song and then I'll give it a thumbs up and you can start. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll hear it. Anyway. So silence for five seconds, people. All right. Well, that's before you go to break. And we're back. You're listening to episode 10 of Have You Heard on YQ Radio. I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tambray Mello. Uh, to my right is uh, the Golden Gate Queen herself, Ms. Z. Uh, right in front of me, it's uh, the, the Empress of Britain, Ms. Tommy. Oh, and I guess uh, Mohammed Anis. And in the studio, we have one of the best bands in town, Ash Professor, <laughs> is in the building. Yeah. We're going to talk to them in a few. And uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, decided to come by. I know that you guys came all this way from Dubai to, to join us and all that. And definitely, definitely. Um, right now we're going to do Have You Heard News, kind of change things. And I do appreciate everybody's um, opinions and all that. And we did a really good uh, segment. And I want to thank Mohammed for coming in and 
uh, delivering that uh, very heartfelt speech mm. and, um, you know, solidarity all over the world when it comes to Orlando, everywhere from New York to Los Angeles to France to London. Um, everybody is uh, praying for the city to go back to what, the way it was. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm representing Orlando, too, with my yeah. Orlando yeah. City yeah. Lions shirt. They're oh. one of the best soccer teams in the M MLS. So, <laughs> What do you know? All T-shirts. Uh, All T-shirts. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> no, uh, no one cares. No, no one cares yeah, about no American I football. Should I should have brought my manager. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> Well, I'm a sports person, I'm gonna have to keep working. Oh, okay. oh, uh, no, I mean, I mean, nobody cares about American soccer, right? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, so you. we don't know. I'm still out watching the Copa, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, have you heard news? Just delivering some major stories going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. And one of my all-time favorite cartoons is coming back for a two-hour animated film. It's from Nickelodeon. Okay. What? Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. I I love I that show. Yeah. Well, that is a great yeah. cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the, the like growing up here you get you don't get hair on the YouTube. Oh. Oh, YouTube. Come on. YouTube. So, YouTube and Dubai and Emirates? No. no I'm yeah. not Hey Arnold. I'm Where? born and raised here. Where? Nickelodeon. There you go. <laughs> they, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. They have the channel. There's yeah, ways. There's ways. But Showtime. Yeah, they're they can't. They're gonna come out. Showtime. You never grew. You never bought Showtime. Let's not. Oh, it's. Okay. So, so hey, uh, the new movie is called. It's hey, it's hey Arnold the Jungle movie, and they're bringing all the characters back. Uh, uh, Love it. Uh, Phoebe, Harold, Rhonda, Olga. And uh, basically, we all remember that the show ran on Nickelodeon for almost uh, for eight seasons, from 1996 to 2004, and follows the adventures of fourth grader Arnold, who lives in a boarding house with his grandparents. A Hey Arnold movie, sensibly titled Hey Arnold the Movie, hit theaters in 2002. I didn't see that one. Uh, I'm going to check that out. Gross only $15 million. A new two-hour TV movie, Hey Arnold the Jungle Movie, premieres next year and resumes the actions of where the show left off. The new movie promises to resolve unanswered questions and plot lines, <laughs> including Arnold finally getting answers about the whereabouts of his missing parents. Okay. So um, the vice president of content development for Nickelodeon, uh, Chris Vicardi, said, We're incredibly fortunate to work with these talented voice actors who brought to life one of the most celebrated cartoons in Nickelodeon's history. The voice cast is an essential piece to the Hey Arnold universe, and we're excited for a new generation of fans to hear these characters in a new TV movie. So, oh. and, and it also comes with the 25th anniversary of Nickelodeon. Oh, cool. Wow. That's basically one of my things. Watching, you have to watch the first part. To watch it, the first it, part. it has a you bit You have to watch the cartoon. Yeah, it yeah, has a bit of... It's on YouTube. I have to, yeah. I I have think, to try and get Showtime. <laughs> I, I think... I think uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I, th I think you don't have to see all the seasons of uh, Hey Arnold they to get the movie. You just said all your though. unanswered questions. Like, it sounds like there's yeah, many I mean, unanswered questions. I mean, I mean the first four four seasons. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was eight seasons. Did they have a smoke? Okay, I know. But the first, I think four, four, uh, the first four seasons were, 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 are enough to, get, to kind of get the, get the feel of both. But, but it's, available, <laughs> it's, it's available everywhere on YouTube. If you have like Apple TV or any kind of VPN, you'll definitely find... Um, classic ah, YouTube. Episodes. It's on YouTube. You don't need uh, yeah. 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 I just watch a few episodes. Yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. love it. Yeah, been watch. Been watch. It's a cartoon, so it's like watch? twenty minutes. Oh, no, been watch. <laughs> not been watch. Been watch. Listen, listen. I'll tell you watch? I haven't watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. Oh. I am waiting until that show finishes so I can watch it back to back. Then you all miss right. out on all the I don't the like the suspense. Of the I don't like the suspense. Oh, I don't care the, for the camaraderie. I want to <laughs> see. I, I, I care for the show. I, I, I want ask you the guys, story. I, I, I want to ask you guys a question since we're, most of us are Nickelodeon fans. What was your favorite Nickelodeon show when you growing up? Uh, for me, it's gonna have to be the Amazing Spider. Wait, the Amazing Spider-Man aired on uh, on Nickelodeon? No, no, no it did not. No, it did not. No. Yeah. Okay, uh, Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. Avatar. <laughs> Avatar. Yeah. Avatar. Yeah. Avatar. Yeah. Avatar. Yeah. The Last Airbender. The Last Airbender. The Last Airbender was on Nick. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I watched Nickelodeon way longer than I was supposed to. Oh, <laughs> because I have a younger sister, so right, she's six right, years right. younger, you know? Absolutely. We watched a lot of Nick at Night. Do you remember? Yeah, um, Nick at Night, of course. And also yes. uh, Saturday Night Nick. So they had Are You Afraid of the Dog? Oh, yes. And yeah, sure. uh, it was just a whole Saturday <laughs> Night Nick. Still watching How it. long did you watch it till? <laughs> what age? Well into high school. <laughs> so took, my sister was six years younger, so. Yeah. She's still shows, watching it, trust just, me. All of us just disclosed our age group. Like, <laughs> yeah. Live, you know? Oh, yeah. I got so many of my favorites. Uh, Double Dare. Um, uh, salute Your Shorts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> salute Your Shorts. <laughs> Guts. Remember that show? Guts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Legends yeah. of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, that was great. That, that was awesome. I wanted to be on that show to compete. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um... Oh. And it was like American Gladiator for kids. That was a great Yeah. Show. Uh, well, I, I, don't... I know what you're talking about. Um, We're going to look it up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, what was it? Oh, going even back. You can't do that on television. Yeah. Mr. Wizard. Um, <laughs> Whoa, Mr. Mr. Wizard. Mr. Wizard was on Nickelodeon. No, he was PBS. No, he was Nick. Wasn't was sister, he? Sister on Nickelodeon? Sister, sister, yeah. Well, as, as a... Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Mutant Smart Girl. Oh, Sabrina, 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 Sabrina explains, Clarissa explains it all. Clarissa explains it all. Yeah. 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 Sabrina is a Nickelodeon show? Yeah, it was a Nickelodeon yeah. show. Yeah. And because of that, now, you know, because of my sons, so we watch Nick back. Jr., we watch things like Dora oh, and man. Yo Gabba Gabba and, and all these crazy things. Yeah. Sabrina, Sabrina you think Sabrina the, the, the adult, would come back? The adult, the Sabrina's older. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Sabrina's older than that. Uh, 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 no more. <laughs> I, I like the vibe here. I, I like the me memory lanes. We're, we we all come back. We all come from that that cool generation of uh, being raised on television. Yeah. Being raised on television. <laughs> I had yeah. yeah. a big thick television. Black and white. Yeah. Uh, this is cool. One of my favorite comedy shows is coming back, and I love this guy. Who is it? Um, the suspense. Hey, give us a hint. Come on, let's play. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he co-wrote Seinfeld. Oh, uh, Kirby enthusiasm. Kirby enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Oh no! Oh, that show's hilarious. It's um, it's coming back now. Here, here's the thing. It it ran from 2000 to 2011, and they didn't have a new season. So. Six years later, they decided, okay, we're gonna, uh, Larry David, uh, we're going to have a brand new season of Kirby Enthusiasm. It's one of those uh, shows where he puts himself in a situation, right. and it, and we know that it's not his fault, hmm. but he just gets himself into uh, some funny situations. Like for example, because he was this, uh, he was the co-creator of Seinfeld. He he, um, the classic episode. He's worth all this money. He decides to get a job as a car salesman. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, one of his friends is a uh, comedian, Richard Lewis, and uh, he, he's uh, he's working with the same manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, Larry David's manager says, "Well, you gotta be careful with him. He's he's high maintenance." So he comes to the car uh, he comes to the car uh, store where he's working, mm -hmm. and confronts him about that. And it's just like a, a whole mess and everything. But I, I'm I, I like that show, and it, it's on HBO. Start from season one, and and it's it's one of those great Jewish humors and all that. But what does it look like? Is yeah, does he have like whitish hair? Yeah, yeah. yeah whitish yeah. hair and, ah. and yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he, he lately he's been doing uh, <laughs> he's been doing the impression of uh, Bernie Sanders on Saturday Night yeah, Live yeah. and everything. He's funny. He's In my humble opinion, nothing beats Frazier, but that's just me. No. I'm afraid. What? I'm afraid. Frazier. You say Frazier beats Seinfeld? Yes, I do. Yes, I, I do. I agree. I am. I wow, am a really? I hard yeah. Fraser fan. I don't care. What I, I like. Say. I need to enjoy the characters and all the ones in Seinfeld. I don't like them. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to spend time with them. Costanza yeah. uh, and. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, Listen, all that awful people. I'm afraid. No, Listen, no, I, I like Seinfeld. I, I honestly do, but I cannot. It cannot contend. It does not even hold a candle. Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you one thing. Their last episode sucked. <laughs> that that was just a I, I didn't Seinfeld? like it at Seinfeld that that was awful. It was a, it was an absolute. But job. again, oh Denzel, I'm 34 by the way. Asking me my age. <laughs> <laughs> I watch television. All the time. Wow, look at the references. <laughs> what um. Everyone's like googling right now. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, okay, speaking about Frazier, what about what about Friends? 
What about Friends? Oh, I've watched every episode like 10 times. No, there's always that one episode that you have on TV and you're like, how? I didn't see that one. How did I miss that one? Yeah. Talking about a great last episode, I mean, if you don't cry when they pan around the empty apartment, you don't have a heart. I got pissed off. Rachel and Ron's going back and forth. I know. But it was a happy ending. I heard the the movie or whatever whatever it was called, there was a remake of something. I don't know. There was an extra one an hour hour and a half special of friends that they made when they're old and okay. i heard it was an absolute flop oh. well, well, we don't know about yeah, it so i think must have um, been <laughs> no, but, but i don't think they would get together because what what would you know they're young, they were young when they did yeah. the show no well, they they did one they, they did one it's, 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 one. One. it's a special it's a one one an hour but i heard it was an absolute flop i heard yeah well you can't go how can you top that show, yeah. you know, seriously, yeah. shows like that and, you have and to Seinfeld. Yeah. Well, they did. Sometimes you go, oh. They yeah. did. They yeah. actually, I, they, I think it was probably after 50, well, how, how long? 10? 10, ten, ten years. years. Ten years. Ten years. After ten years of running, I think there would there could not there could not be a better ending yeah. than what we saw. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was well written. Right. How many people were watching? Uh, uh, in that, uh, like a hundred, they, they reported a hundred million? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and funny enough, each, each actor was paid like uh, I think a million point five million dollars of ep- an episode. Yeah, because wow. it was a pop culture. Years. Yeah. Wow. Well, they, yeah. they didn't get that from the beginning. Like yeah, the no, show had to gain like super popularity. Yeah. Okay. They got that okay. And I think I introduced the world to Starbucks. Because of friends, I went to Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, I went to Central Park and also. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> that wasn't. That wasn't. That was <laughs> One more story. Uh, he's doing fine. Are you, are y'all fans of Little Wayne? No. Uh, no. 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 Meh. It's scary. <laughs> oh, he had seizures. He had a seizure, yeah, uh, again. What happens when you do all the drugs? Well, the well, thing that he drinks. What in particular? This, this, this concoction that he drinks, it's a combination of codeine, permethazine, permethazine, wow. and Sprite. And it gives him a, a little bit of high. It's called lean. So he's basically done the stem cell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love Little Wayne. I love uh, some of his songs. Amelia's my favorite. Check Amelia, it out. Amelia. There's, Amelia, a, there's an Amelia, old... Um, Amelia, yeah. Amelia. Amelia. There's a, a... There's a documentary about Lil Wayne. It's old. Maybe from like 2008 <laughs> or 2009. And the whole time he has a cup and he's drinking. <laughs> Lean. It's no, it's not. No, no it's like, Little Wayne caught. No, no. <laughs> that's the scissor. The scissor. Yeah, I think. They call it yeah, lean. Yeah. <laughs> or you call it lean. Well, okay. When I have a cup, <laughs> I'm like coffee, that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we was, check in your cups. Like full water bottles, like before yeah. when yeah. we perform. Yeah, it's water. Well, he's doing fine. Uh, he was uh, traveling, crisscrossing from Milwaukee to California for for a show. And uh, he refused treatment, but then the, the the plane went back to Omaha because he got really sick. Uh, he got he suffered an epileptic seizure and went to the hospital. And um, he's had seizures in the past, and that's what, he said that he's quit drinking lean. Now it's called lean, not zero. No scissor. Scissor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a drink containing promethazine and codeine syrup mixed with Sprite because of the seizures, but was seen Sunday night openly drinking it in Milwaukee. <laughs> wait, wait. We're getting politically correct on, 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 on cocktails now? No, no, no. Just <laughs> an accurate name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Man, it's disgusting. But um, he's doing fine. Uh, yeah, you just have to be careful with what you mix, man, because that's not good for you. Uh, codeine's an opiate. It's yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, su- I'm surprised. I'm surprised that he hasn't suffered like some sort of seizure. Well, no, yeah. Or, or yeah, not I'm sorry, not a seizure, overdose. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's mixing yeah. two two drugs. Yeah. You know. Oh well. Well, that's how you heard news. And uh, when we come back, uh, uh, we're gonna have uh, Miss Tommy talk about what's hot in Abu Dhabi. We're here with. As for Casper, and uh, we're going to come back. You're listening to Have You Heard on Y-Cube Radio. <laughs> Why is it pointed at me? <laughs> All right. we'll, we'll, we'll break that if you want. Hmm? We'll break that if you want. Yeah, why not? Yeah. All right, we're live. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's do this. <coughs> you guys. <coughs> Alright, we're here with Tony. The Empress of Britain. Yeah, but I'm so know, honored to I, be I, the I, I know. I, I kind of feel like. Away. And we're back. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we got we're back. Uh, have you heard on, on uh, Wacky Radio? Uh, Z just uh, gave us some breaking news yet again. Something has happened. Go ahead and uh, um, report us what's going on. At June fourteenth, seven nineteen p.m., uh, I'm reading an update. Five people were injured in downtown Oakland. We we're just talking about hitting close to home, mm. so that's real close for me. Um, and while attending a vigil for Orlando. So these people were sending prayers to those injured in Orlando. And there was a shooting that broke out. Um, I don't see any more news right now about who or, um, you know, why. But, I mean, it's just insane. This is insane. Yeah. And uh, hopefully they're okay and all that. Mm. And, uh, well, if anything breaks up, uh, anything during the show, um, any updates will definitely bring that to you but um let's get back to the positivity right now um it's time for what's hot in abu dhabi with miss tommy the empress of britain the empress of britain that's <laughs> right <laughs> right uh abu dhabi the abu dhabi the abu dhabi mall ramadan village so um July the 10th to the 15th. So visit the Ramadan village, which is in Abu Dhabi Mall, and discover hearts, real falcons, traditional artifacts, water fountains, and many more. Treat yourself to some henna, mm -hmm. and enjoy complimentary coffee and dates in the Majlis while your children take part in a range of interactive activities, mm -hmm. workshops, such as pottery, painting, playmaking, arts and crafts. Uh, but you also find a Ramadan souk with a range of vendors showcasing traditional items, crafts such as Emirati dresses, coffee sets, handmade crafts, wooden items, spices, uh, amongst other shopping list items for Eid. So do go there with your children. And there's also plenty of chances to win big prizes. Uh, vouchers up to 10,000 dirhams awaiting you. Nice. I love money, so I would, I would go there. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, okay. can, we, can we go with you? I love I'm spicy. Uh, I love this one, actually. This is the um, Abu Dhabi Sports Festival. Mm -hmm. Any sporty people here? Yeah. What do you play? Uh, soccer. <gasps> Me too! Yeah, yeah. what do you play? Basketball. But I can't play basketball. Yeah. Tennis? Tennis? <laughs> <clears throat> Rugby. I like squash. Oh, cool. Oh, ping okay. pong. Ping pong. I play, I play ping pong. Oh, really? That's the one you kind of push against the I, I play ping pong. They call it table, uh, table tennis. Yeah. Tennis. yeah. <laughs> I, like squash, but yeah. I have a feeling that I'll be uh, ridiculed. But, uh, <laughs> let's is uh, is uh, biking a sport? Yeah. 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 Taekwondo, I'm sorry. Yeah. Taekwondo. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're totally oh, nice. also right. Oh, right. Oh, you can kick some ass then. Totally. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Nice. Be careful, huh? Especially if you're sad. Nice. So, this is happening at the National <laughs> Exhibition Center. So, the Abu Dhabi Sports Festival is geared towards creating an exciting <laughs> location for community to participate and interact with sports while providing a platform for families and for all ages. So the, fest the festival will include a number of various sporting competitions. And one of them is the Ramadan Government Football Championship, um, which is won until the 30th of June, actually. So registration is free um, and they're grand prizes. Uh, the winning team will get 75,000 dirhams. What? Wow. What do I have to do? I know, right? <laughs> Sign up. Uh, Wait, runner what? up, 50,000 dirhams. And third position, 25,000 dirhams. I'm turning Olympic right now. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's third position, 25,000. <laughs> hey, what's, so the what's the prize money again? 75. 75. That's a lot of money. I'm turning Olympic. <laughs> so for contact, uh, for information, more information, just contact Mona on 02408-8967. Mona, I'm calling you right now. again. 02408-8967. And last but not least is the Yasalam. Emerging talent competition. Yes. And you were saying last week you didn't finish what you were saying. Um, this this that is a competition. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, I, this is according to 
what I heard from uh, the the heads of White Cube, they're probably mm. gonna bring some artists that are participating. I haven't heard anything. Okay. Well, okay. So what? But it, it's. Oh, well, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. The, no the Yasalam uh, Emerging Talent Competition. So to enter, artists must submit their music recordings, videos, and answer a few simple questions to Flash Entertainment through the Yasalam website. So that's www.yasalam.ae until September uh, 24th, which is Saturday. So the winner of the Emerging Talent Competition will go on to perform to a packed audience at Beats on the Beach and secure a year-long residency in the village at the Do Arena. That's, so that's check that out. Last time, wasn't it? Okay, you guys did that. Yeah, yeah, they, cool. Yeah, that's the same one, emerging talent. Yeah, was it was a good. Uh, well, we were how many? Like twenty, twenty-five performers. Yes, yeah, salam is all. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And then they narrowed it down to three, and I think SOS, uh, the band, if yeah, you've heard yeah, of them, they're yeah. a hip hop R&B group. So they made it, and they performed on Beats on the Beach. Oh, okay, yeah. they nice, won. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're they're cool. really good. They're really good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, yes. I got one more thing. Yes. I'm yeah. going tonight, so that's how I know. Um, at Warehouse 421 in the Mina, I don't know if you guys have heard of this new venue, it's supposed to be amazing, and um, there's something called The Journey of the Pearl, so it's in collaboration with Rooftop Rhythms, mm -hmm. and it's um, reinterpreting pearling stories, <laughs> so that sounds strange, but you know, this region is known for pearling, yeah. so um, it says visitors can relive the life of an Emirati pearling family that dealt with the consequences of departure, travel, and returning home through compelling theatrical and storytelling production. Mm. So I know a few different people um, uh, that, you know, through the Rooftop Rhythms family who are actually participating. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to be there tonight. So it's at 8.30 at mm. the Warehouse 421 in Mina. Sweet. So you okay. Check it out. Sounds Sweet. good. It's free. Shout out to Paul. <laughs> if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, all, that's all. Yes. All right, cool. Um, we're gonna play a song from a, a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Andrew Beckner. Uh, arguably one of the, to me, one of the best singers, songwriters, and guitar players of all time. And he's a fellow Orlando native. Um, he sent when this tragedy happened. He decided to send me um, an original song that that he wrote. It was a tribute to a friend of his that passed away a few years ago. Uh, he built a his guitar, but it's kind. Of, and he said, "Well, I want you to play the song poignant because of our people back home, because he lives in Los Angeles and all that." Mm -hmm. So we're gonna play the song. It's called "Can't Move On," and when we come back, we're gonna have our exclusive interview with Asper Casper, and uh, you're listening to "Have You Heard" on Y Cube Radio. Should we open the door so I can hear, we can hear them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking whenever you do a fade out, we should start clapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All uh... right. Uh, do you wanna? Oh, you still haven't done the interview. No, we haven't done the interview yet. After the interview, then we'll we'll take the table out. Okay. So just play this song and go back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. That's my boy, what do you think? It's really good. The song. No, we do the interview and then we're going to perform. People are complaining that Facebook Live is pretty laggy. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? So, I, I don't are you on the Wi-Fi yet? Uh, I'm small no, today. I'm using the, the 4G of my phone. And like, on there? Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's pretty strong. Oh. I mean, it might just be better to get on the Wi-Fi. That's my boy, Andrew. So you have the same uh, internal temperature as your sister then? Yeah. I lived in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I wasn't. Follow us. It's very, 
We, oh, we yeah, that's okay. Quite <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was born in, uh, I was born yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm yeah. an Aramco kid. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You're an Aramco kid. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just be like, <laughs> almost everyone has like shivering. Yeah. 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 Everyone lives in Aramco when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, like 30 what, degrees in our apartment. It's an Arabian oil company. Oh, right. But more, I think it's the only company there. Yeah. Everyone lives there. Where are you from? Uh, America. My sister's just getting to know the band. I was in Tennessee last. Oh, wow. Been here nine years. She's visited NBC. twice. Three yeah. times. Really? Uh, yeah, I am. I am. But yeah. I also left after four years in Vermont and was like, I'm never going to be cold again. <laughs> it was my goal to always be able to And now to he just flip-flops. makes us cold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my last thing is season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See? I got another support. Funny thing, man. Oh, that's beautiful. So talented, man. Heartfelt in his voice. By the way, yeah. hey, how many listeners we got? Yeah. How many listeners we got? Uh, I can't really tell you the number. I'll tell you later. I'm okay. Go. <coughs> Is it more than seven? <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried to stick around as much as I could. It's not my phone. Oh, it is my hey, we're back. You're listening to Have You Heard on YQ Radio. That was my boy, Andrew Beckner. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, great original song, Can't Move On. And uh, I'm here with uh, the, my lovely lady co-host, Miss, uh, the uh, Golden Gate Queen herself, Ms. Z, uh, the Empress of Britain, Ms. Oh, yeah. Tommy, uh, Mohammed Anis. And right now, we're going to have an exclusive interview you, you're gonna, yeah. with uh, arguably... One of the best bands. No, don't flip it because uh, it's going to pause. Or just turn it this way. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I think we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Just like that. Like yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. Just give a thumbs up if, they, if you see it. There you go. There you go. That's not completely out of the picture. All right. Uh, okay. Sorry, guys. We're, we're, we're getting into the uh, – we're learning about the video stream. What was I going to say? Oh, one of the best bands in all of uh, – the UAE, we had the, the privilege of playing at the same gig at the last metronome, and I had the fortunate uh, pleasure of meeting the the band. Uh, let me introduce to you guys to, as per Casper, in the right. building. Ooh, yeah. One more there. That's my little sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. She's the Casper Jr. So, uh, so in as, literally, A.S., P-E-R. Yeah, just one S, yeah? Okay. All right. so, <laughs> how, how, how did you come up with that name? <laughs> it started there in 2011, and my um, okay. mate was Jamaican, and he thought I was the whitest Arab she'd ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it, I was, and I still am, but mm-hmm. still better. So that, that's, that's how right. Casper came about, and then we just needed a quick band name. So another friend said, how about Asper Casper? Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> As if Casper isn't bad enough. Uh, and then... You know, that sort of stuck, and so it's still you're, stuck. Technically, you're Casper. Yes, okay. not the ghost, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I had people send in, like, uh, logo submissions as mm-hmm. ideas for me, and they all looked ghostly, and I was like, oh. uh, <laughs> that's really not where we're going with this. <laughs> completely gone. Your nationali- uh, nationalities, please. Uh, well, let's go around and actually yeah, yeah. Yeah, introduction. Yeah, yeah. Introduction. Yeah, Casper. We know that. Uh, yeah, I'm Zach. I'm American, and I play percussion. South Carolina. No, no, no. Uh, I lived in Tennessee, though. Oh, okay. oh nice. He's, he's What's home in America? America? Oh, you said you were a Navy. Yeah. Navy brat. Yeah, yeah. I'm split up all he's, the time. He's seaworthy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my dad was always. <laughs> all right. I'm with Yav. I'm from Bahrain, and I play guitar. Ooh. Good times. And sometimes ukulele. Yeah. Sometimes ukulele. <laughs> sometimes bass, too. Yeah. There's a lot nice. that goes on when we rehearse as well. He's a real orchestra. Nice. And Carla, where are you from? I'm Syrian Tosi, and I sing and songwrite. I play a bit of guitar. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to play cajon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try to take over their instruments. <laughs> and tambourine, don't forget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how did you guys meet? Yeah, um, she did a rock camp for girls in Bahrain, and we do one here. It's been three years. It's called mm-hmm. 717. She sort of start them up into the music scene, and it's pretty cool. Cool. We can talk mm-hmm. about it if you want. Uh, but yeah, so she moved here and she sort of contacted us because of that connection. Um, and literally we met and 
She said, oh, I play guitar, and I said, great. And I always, <laughs> like, do you want to, and she's like, yeah. And she's like, I know, you know someone who plays cajon? I'm like, great. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that's how it came about. And we also have uh, Mustafa, who's not here, who's Egyptian, and he's our mm. lead guitarist, and I, I knew him through work, but. We had been talking about it for two years, and then suddenly everything mm -hmm. came into place. Yeah. So nice. it was meant to be. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. really good. Really good. Look at their faces. Look at these guys. So you got a question? So you said uh, you met Mustafa at work. So we know as musicians in the UAE, and actually musicians starting anywhere, um, it's not necessarily your full-time gig. So what do you guys do? When you're not playing music, what do you do to uh That's too big, but there's yourself. a lot of weird stuff I can do. <laughs> 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 That's still a big yes. <laughs> what, what's on your visa? <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> I can't even talk about <laughs> yeah, it. What's the maturity rating of the show? <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Take, take, take it away, okay. sorry. Um, I'm a lion tamer. Uh, oh. It's very useful in Al-Barsha and Dubai. No, it's only useful when he's trying to, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on my <laughs> No, I'm a teacher. Uh, I teach English uh, literature at Dubai American Avenue. Cool. Okay. Nice. I, uh, I do marketing uh, in a marketing agency, uh, BBDO, and um, that's my daytime job. And then I do music after that. Cool. Uh, I was a finance controller. Wow. at a multinational company and I quit to do music but to support myself I had to do something so I teach children language through play and music awesome nice, nice. Time. yeah I, it's keeping it close to home yeah, close to the music yeah. and the rock camp uh, but it's a non-profit what so. does Casper Jr. do? <laughs> yes, she does something uh, uh, really cool. There, there's She's another man. Uh, director of two uh, very popular shows in Lebanon. Nice. One is nice. a show, the other one is a, a comedy skit, isn't it? Yep, and I get the summer off. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> T, you got, uh, T, you got a question for the band? Um, Ask for Casper. Not a question, but I just, you know, I'd, I'd never met. You know, you guys, until I went to Metronome. Uh, my name's Carla, because everyone I think is from Casper. Casper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a comment, really. That, uh, I'm know, for, I forget sometimes. Yeah. My gosh, like your performance blew me away. Like, I was oh, sat okay. right Thank at the you. front, and the way mm -hmm. you just control the audience and the way you got them. How much you know. did you drink that much? <laughs> 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 I don't drink, but you know, you guys are so, they are absolutely. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank amazing. You. So, I have to admit the energy of, I mean, the energy on stage is really good, mm. and everyone brings their own element. But he's like our energy hub. So every time you look at it, it's it's good. I, you know, it's funny because most of our songs are pretty mellow, like you know, and yeah. it's just it's interesting to to be you know the contrast. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, because yeah. not a lot of performers can do that. You know, carry the audience along with you and. You know, you did that, and I was just in awe. I was just sat oh, there like, wow, cool. how, can, how do you... <laughs> we were we were talking after the show. I'm gonna follow that. How? Are we gonna... <laughs> yeah, it's not about magical powers. It's you're putting people in their zone, mm. and it's that's like the best place <laughs> to be in. You know, mm. and, and there's it's very hard for that not to feed onto whoever's watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think from getting to know Carla, and you know, I've, I've played music for a long, long time, but. Um, when I saw Carla, it's it's she's a good musician, she's a really good songwriter, and she's a good singer. But her charisma, she's a performer, and I think there's right. a difference between being a performer and being a musician. Yeah. Um, and I think that Carla's definitely got a lot of the musician in her, but she's an amazing performer. Yeah. I think that's really what sets her apart. Yeah. Somehow that connection, I can't, that charisma, yeah. that I, somehow I just can't pose for a picture. On put me on stage, I'm great. Posing yeah. for a picture, horrible. Sure. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I got a question. Yeah, our, when our is, guest. When is, when is the man, the next blockbuster music? <laughs> <laughs> when, is, when is the when is the next music video? Well, what can we honestly, start? we've uh, we, I started even before I met them. I started one with a relative of mine, yeah. sort of been lagging. <laughs> 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 um, look, I'm planning to release um, an album, and I say I not to exclude these guys; they're amazing. But I had been working on an album for a while now, mm -hmm. for almost two years, and ho luckily we got one song together on it. Um, and before that, my aim is to release at least one video. Mm. So uh, hopefully this one will help with her expertise at Casper Junior. Casper Junior. She what? said sure, but I'm leaving Sunday. I said <laughs> I can't. 
<laughs> but definitely, it's, it's important. What's I guess for Junior's name? <laughs> uh, Sandra. Huh? Sandra. 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 Sandra's very beautiful. Oh. 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 Thank you, thank you. Hey, you got a compliment from the Empress of Britain. Though. Way! <laughs> Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> who are your major influences musically? Let's start with Zach. Who are your major influences? Um, I mean, a lot of people. I'm really into kind of folky acts. Like, Guster was a huge influence when I was in college. Mm -hmm. Rusted Root, I love the percussion. Um, and people like that, you know, uh, the jazz influences. I don't really know his name, uh, but he's the drummer for uh, Dave uh, Burke. Brubeck, Dave Brubeck's drummer, absolutely amazing. Uh, the guy for uh, Joe Morello, Joe Carter, Morello, yeah. yeah. Carter Buford for Dave Matthews. They're all insanely good, and I would I'm nowhere anywhere close to their league, but I I really enjoy their style and try to incorporate a tiny little bit sometimes. Well, Ida, who who's your major influences when it comes uh, to the guitar playing? Guitar playing, um, I would say uh, my favorite band is Hot Chili Peppers. Nice. Yeah, uh, nice. Uh, like unfortunately, the old uh, guitarist who left now. Um, definitely a lot of like yeah, my my playing and riffs. I listen to a lot uh, of their play of him, like his videos, and uh, I see his technique, and I think that's what influences me. Mm. He's a hardcore rocker. Like Moshpits and stuff. Nice. Carla, who's your influences? I'm, I'm a bit more, I mean, I grew up. In a, I think a uh, commercial atmosphere for the Arabian. So I'm, I grew up influenced by Lionel Richie. Nice. <laughs> that was like my mom. Did my you mom see him when he that. came here? Of course. A couple of years ago. I think yeah. I was the only person under 50 who knew all the songs. <laughs> uh, what and I was friends? singing at the top of Including my Including the, one, yeah, the ones where he did with the Commodores? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Media City. Media City. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Open up. It's really good. Uh, and then it went on to Brandy. I love oh, yeah. ah. And I love Usher. So, so underrated, I, yeah. Randy. I mean, I'm, I love all music. Like, I will listen yeah. to every genre and something will move me. All right. But, like, <laughs> I still sing along yeah. to, you know, like Usher and Brandy oh, and so Eternal. And, like, these really, like... Eternal, wow. I'm, I'm into hip-hop and R&B, although my, my music, I mean, it is what it is and it is me, but it just somehow became that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you, When you hear it, you'll hear that it has, I think, a bit of, you know... Everything. Yeah. yeah. True, true. Yeah, it does. But Brandy, oh. Yeah. Oh, heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> she's coming back. Yeah. You know, she's, she's getting it together. She, mm. she no, no, no really I'm about. trying to sort of step up. She comes back, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy stepped out. <laughs> um, where can everybody check you out? Because uh, we're looking forward, <laughs> we're looking forward to the, the live performances. I, I asked you guys to play two songs uh, live. Because we uh, we want to experience what we experience in Metronome, not only for everybody tuning into the show in Abu Dhabi, but all over the world. So, where can everybody check you guys out? SoundClub, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Instagram, all under Asper well, what, Casper. What's your name? Oh, Asper Casper. Okay. Um, I've created a website for us. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's actually. Live, <laughs> so check it out. Any feedback on how to improve it, please, because I have nothing to do with that kind of thing. But it's also aspercasper.com. I wonder why no one's bought that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I'd have to say, um, I put a come lot of stuff on Instagram. Yeah, Watch come out, see Brady. us live. Yeah, yeah come we see us live. We on Dubai, and you know, and we go out. What are some shows? Out. What are some next shows? Uh, you have anything? Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say now because everything suddenly just yeah. stopped. Like we were like digging twice a week, and now we're like, what do we do this yeah. week? <laughs> <laughs> um, but usually we're in Tribeca a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Jazz, um, music Jazz we, we, oh, We're involved sweet. in a lot of uh, events with uh, Abo, Go Play the World, Sound Garden, Freshly Ground Sounds. You know. Okay. It, yeah, it's it's a huge. Uh, big family so we're always mm -hmm. we just want to play so whoever's hosting the night will play yeah. mm -hmm. what's been your favorite uh gig what's one of your favorite gigs out here that show was one of mine honestly like they, everybody yeah. was up dancing the last one or yeah yeah the last one it was a great show i love yeah, tribeca i love playing tribeca i love the outfit that you wore that night oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> He will wear his glasses at any yeah, time of the day. Yeah, there you go. If we're performing, yeah. if we're performing in the evening, he will wear those glasses. For one song, but at the last show, they asked me to, to wear them the whole time, so I did. Yeah. <laughs> it was a album watch. What's your favorite? 
Hmm. Um, I think the um, the Formula One zone we had it in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah, oh no, the F one fan zone. Yeah. yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I like yeah. the stage. It's like a, a big stage, and we we're That's all true. there. Um, it feels it felt real, didn't it? Like yeah. like they have the proper setup, don't they? Like, yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they real do. Real sound check. Yeah. Real. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, most I, of the fans were didn't, very hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Really, weren't they? Wow. The the actual soldiers yeah. performing. They like, um. Yeah. No, that was an actual uh, F1 uh, game. It's not beats on the beach, but you know the fan zone that happens Corniche, prior. Corniche. On the Corniche. Corniche. Okay. It's sort of just farther down. Um, it's nice. During the week, they have every night they have a different local artists. Yeah. So we did that. Makinda, actually. Makinda Ray. Yeah, she's in, in she in yeah. in backstage. Yeah, we got a chance to perform at Fan Zone, and that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all ready to perform? Always. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a break. Get these guys situated, and when we come back, we're gonna have a live performance. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> okay. that's okay. It's just it's it's not, yep. really sensitive. <laughs> All right, we're gonna set up in just a moment. Are they gonna set up? Let me put this right here. Help them out. Yeah, yeah, so we got a move the tables, I'm guessing? I think just that one. Just that one, yeah. We can pull this one back a little bit into the space. Oh, oh watch out. Yeah, oh, the mic you is... killed the audience. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That mic is... Uh... Yeah, hold this real quick. What side yeah. do you want this one? What's that? It's going to be like... This I'm just going to take the table and you can just yeah, stand here. Yeah. So after they're done, I think they'll just like... Stay quiet and then you can close the show. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Just sit down. No, you want to introduce them? You have a good yeah. introduction. Okay. <laughs> no, he's. Talking about after they finish, yeah. they'll just stay in the. They'll just stay here yeah. until they go. He's sitting on that. Oh, there's your. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. my, my wife is like, I don't, I don't suffer, I don't suffer, I suffer from no ass at all. She's like, oh, are you looking at my butt for? Okay. She said that to you? Yeah, she, she always no tells me that. I have no ass. Look. I, <laughs> yes, I have no ass. I can just keep it on the mic. How often do you do this? This is awesome. Once a week. You know, I love any place that you come into what? and you feel like you've stepped out of the UAE, yeah. out of, you know. Uh, you know, you, we, we, try to, we try to do a good show and, and make everyone we'll feel right. We'll talk to you about it. It's it's real. Real. We want to do something called mm -hmm. um, creative we want everybody. We want everybody and to feel comfortable, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's so. a weekly yeah. meeting um, of it's creative uh, every uh, and, it's and mm -hmm. city thank has you, thank you. Here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's actually all around the world. Like more countries go around the world. Oh, so to have thank you guys for the emojis. To submit like a thank you, video. thank you, uh, uh, Ball Ball for it's, sharing it's, they're, they're uh, really the show live. Angie Minor, thank you, thank you very much. Mike Glory, thank you. Asper Casper is going to be performing in a few minutes. You you won't want to miss this. They're one of the best bands in town, and it's going to be a lot of fun. A few shots, like really minimal, a few seconds of performances that you've done. Hi hey guys. What's going on? Yeah, So not just the city, but like shots of, of events and things that are happening around the city, around the city that are creative. Um, so remember that the freedom side. Five or six or nine. I don't know if that needs a mic in the room here. I know. Well, it doesn't have to be us. It's not. Um, why should I'll, I'll give you? I'll show you. Uh, if you just go to YouTube and you have a creative something, morning, you have a audition. You you'll see them from all over. The oh, place. I'm sorry. Like all we have over the world. It's, it's a big group, and, and so basically each city does their own. Oh man. Oh, what about what is this? Anything really? Oh, that, that's that's no, lightweight. Light. That's, that's actually very light. What are you looking for? Uh, yeah, one minute. What did you need? I don't know if you. Oh, I guess we'll be okay. I don't know if you need the mic. It's blue. Um, this is a bit. <laughs> it's very sensitive, so I think Hi. you don't have to. Yeah, you can just. Uh, can I get a phone right here? Yeah, that's fine. See? Yeah. Ain't that weird? Yeah. See me right here? Like, just like rustling papers. Yeah, yeah. I did the.
That's cool. That That's That's awesome. What's the next what's the next song you're going to do for us? Do my part. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> that, that, that was amazing. Asper Casper. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Thank you guys. Thank you. We're gonna wrap things up right now. 
uh, we're do our top ten. Top ten. Top ten list. Uh, we'll do this real quick. Uh, we, we already did the music break anyway, so. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much. That, that, was, that was a great performance. And, uh, it's amazing to watch. I love I love watching I love watching people in their elements, you know, like uh, you can tell and, and and each of you it, I mean Zach was just yeah. going hard on that. Show. I was feeling so <laughs> on that go on. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was a shade. <laughs> you know why he puts his glasses on cuz when he doesn't he closes his eyes. I love it, but I'm like sack sack. So now I can't see those eyes before. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> So you can think you're making eye contact. <laughs> Not really, because Carla, you got your Backstreet Boy thing, you know, you're, like you're just feeling it. And that's that's part of the energy that you, we we feel as an audience. Awesome. And I think that's part of the reason that we were all so impressed on the guitar, from Metronome. Yeah. 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 Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, you guys are just all really in your element and really in your zone. So a Cuba, good band. we love it. So. Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, this is probably the best show we've had so far, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Can I ask a rude question? How old are you guys? <laughs> is that rude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Second time. We did this last week. Second, yeah. I could lie and say 22 and probably pass. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't now because you know all the shows. 32. You know all the shows. 32. 32. Okay. Yeah. 25. Wow. 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. Oh, yeah. What about you guys? Come on, man. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you after. I'm sure. <laughs> but really, guys, thank you so much for having us on. It's been a real pleasure. Hey, no yeah, problem. Yeah, it this is great. This is great. Anytime, anytime. Dude, I want to <laughs> move in next door. Just <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> next week, same time. <laughs> you know what you're doing is amazing. And I, I know I don't have to tell you that. I've been seeing the amazing responses from people on, on the app. Mm -hmm. This is awesome, really. This is just a room full of creative minds. And that's mm -hmm. what we fuel uh, with, you know? And I think especially in when we're faced with terrible incidences like we've had, mm. I think the best option is to make a more world a better place. Mm. And you guys are doing it. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciate that. And that, that's that's what matters, you know. Mm. That's what matters. Um, Arthur, how much time we have? Can we can we go over? Five minutes. Five minutes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh. <laughs> get to it. Okay, get to all it. Right. Um, let me do it then. Okay. Um, I got my top 10 list of the week. Top 10 worst people at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. All right. Uh, number 10, the know-it-all. You know that that one, that the, the one person that tells you, oh, you're doing this incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they're uh, watching, you know, they're, they're, very, they're very condescending with what you do and all that. Uh, number nine, the grunter. <laughs> 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 Guys just slap their heads yeah. and grunt like s and slap each other. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're weighing like ten pounds. And they're just like, that's, that's just ridiculous. Um, number eight, Mister Liability. That's the person that leaves everything in the middle. <laughs> all the weights out. All the free weights out. Yeah, accidents yeah. waiting to happen and a sweaty towel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have images up. for every single. Thing yeah. That <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um. Number seven, the talker. You know, the one that talks, he does, the, the, they talk more than work out. Mm. And it says, according, according to what it says here, up to 32% of gym rats admit to regularly interrupting their sessions to chat up with friends. Okay? Uh, just dedicate your, it's important to dedicate your time, your fitness, and your health. Uh, leave distractions behind can be the difference between a phenomenal workout and a face plant. <laughs> so, people think you're listening to music. Yeah. <laughs> number um number six, the pickup artist, the one that uh, ah, trying to pick up somebody to go out on a on a date. Uh, Want to gawk, swipe right. Uh, basically, um, if you see someone really ca uh, who really catches your attention, try to make eye contact. Appropriate time, not mid back squat. <laughs> and smile. If the smiles back, wait until she's done crushing it to say hello. If she blows you off, move on. You can go and run ten minutes of intervals to alleviate this the, the stress. So. Number five, the exhibitionist, the one that reveals everything. You know, and, and it's kind of funny here in uh, here in Abu Dhabi. There's a separate gym for the ladies to work out and the men to work out. It's not unisex like in the U.S. and everything. So um, don't don't. Uh, this is for the girls and the and the fellas. Don't reveal too much. 
because that's going to distract uh, everybody. <laughs> so or intimidate. Intimidate. Yeah. Them. yeah. yeah. Disgust. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, number four, the spoiled brat. Uh, basically, uh, they the spoiled brat is the one that doesn't pick up after themselves. They let somebody else pick up the the equipment, leaving leaving them. You know, and, and it's tough because you're trying to find all the the equipment. Like, where's the dumbbell at? And this person just refuses to just yeah. pick it up. And it back, yeah. uh, number three, the Miley, the person that sings while they work out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at that. <laughs> you sing? Good, you know. <laughs> well, you're a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, number two, the, the selfie. Person. Oh, yeah. The yeah. one that takes a picture goes to the mirror, takes a picture of how strong they are. Mirror, you got videos. Oh, videos is worse. And sign. Facebook Live. That's what vines. Do. Oh, I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a dance out. And the, uh, we can all agree with this. The number one top ten worst people in the gym: the sweaty Betty and the stinky Steve. Oh, <laughs> sweat <laughs> can be the mark of hard work, but don't let it stain your reputation. No, wi not wiping down equipment yeah, uh, exponentially really ups the yuck factor for yeah. all parties. I hate that. You know, if you're done with the equipment and you left sweat stains, please take the spray and just spray it or towel. wipe or whatever. Or wipe, right. wipe it down. When it comes to smelling, uh, it's personal hygiene. This causes skin infections, Ew. jock itch, ringworm, and uh, it can spread like wildfire. So <laughs> have a rotation of at least two or three outfits and a stick of deodorant on call. Great. I'm going to have an F-star in a couple of minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. So Me too. That, that is my top ten list of the week. And I hate to say this, but episode ten is in the history books. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank my guests. Asper Casper.